Day in Madden 23, every time I score a touchdown, we are going to be upgrading my NFL team from the worst to the best. So we are starting with the worst team in the NFL, the only team right now that does not have a win, and that is the Houston Texans. That's a good throw right there by Davis Mills. We are going in order right now from record, from the worst record to the best record. Right now, the Texans have the worst record, but let's say there's a team that's one and three. A lot of teams are one and three right now. We're going to be doing all of them. It doesn't matter the order for those teams. To start off the one and three teams, we have the New England Patriots. Right now, Mac Jones is injured. We'll see when he's going to be coming back, but Bailey Zappi, I believe his name was, almost picked up a win over Aaron Rodgers, a third string quarterback in Lambeau. Can you believe that? But right now, we got Mac Jones playing for us. They didn't put Zappi as a starter for some reason. So for right now, we have Mac Jones. But the defense of the Patriots has played well every week for the most part. It's that offense that they need to pick up on. Because of that offensive coordinator, they don't have one no more. Josh McDaniels. So Matt Patricia, a defensive coordinator, is now calling offensive plays. We'll see what happens with the Patriots this year. The Raiders could easily be 2-2 two and two and maybe even 3-1 and one right now. They should have never lost to the Arizona Cardinals. And that game, what a catch by Devontae Adams. And that game against the Titans, they almost came back and won that one. They had a really good game against the Chargers as well. So, so many good games by the Raiders. Only one win, though, to show for it. Devontae Adams, though, that is easy. You have to get the ball to Devontae Adams even more if you're Derek Carr right now. It is the Kenny Pickett era now in Pittsburgh, and we'll see if these offensive weapons for the Steelers can actually get a ball thrown to them pretty well and see if their fantasy value goes up because I know a lot of people drafted Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Chase Claypool, and a couple other guys on the Steelers team. Najee Harris could benefit too, but Kenny Pickett, will he be? The starting quarterback for the Steelers for years to come. We'll see what he's made of in the next few weeks this entire year. But the Kenny Pickett era has started. For the Washington Commanders, this is a pretty average team. A 1-3 team as well. We have Terry McLaurin, who hasn't been amazing this season. We have Curtis Samuel, Johan Dotson. So some good weapons, definitely, offensively for this Washington Commanders team. We'll see what they can do later on in the season. Their defense hasn't played as well as I thought a Washington Commanders defense would play. But we'll see once they get Chase Young back. We'll see if this team can make a run for the wild card in the NFC. It is absurd that the Lions are 1-3 when they have scored the most points in the league by far. 140 points. I didn't mean to go down there with Hawkinson right there, but 140 points scored going into week 5 for the Detroit Lions through 4 games. That's ridiculous. I don't know how they're 1-3. Their defense just has to play decent, and they could be a 3-1 and one team. They easily could have beat the Vikings. They almost came back on the Eagles, and this past week against the Seahawks, they just played a Seahawks team that did not score either. So far in Carolina, they are 1-3 and three as well. And I would say the Lions are a way better team than this Carolina team, but they both have the same record, despite Detroit having literally double their points scored almost, Carolina. But Carolina so far, Baker Mayfield hasn't looked amazing. He's going to have to get it going. They have to get the ball more to Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield, which we're going to do right now. DJ Moore is still a very good receiver. I have him in fantasy football. I'm waiting for Baker Mayfield to hit him in a very good situation where he could actually score a touchdown. He has one touchdown this year. Hasn't had too many targets in years past that he used to from DJ Moore. Just give DJ Moore a good quarterback play, please. And he will be a very good wide receiver in this league. DJ Moore slept on heavily because of the bad quarterback play that he's been getting for years. Let's get the ball to McCaffrey. Get a juke. Get a juke from McCaffrey. Good job by CMC. I got to get DJ Moore the touchdown. I got to show Baker Mayfield how it's done in real life. What is he running right now? I'm just having him run an out route. Come on, DJ Moore. Give me fantasy points. Fantasy. I don't know what that animation was, but fantasy points. The NFC South is the only division in football right now with two one and three teams. And here we go with the Saints. Another guy having fantasy like DJ Moore is Alvin Kamara. He doesn't want to play right now. He's dealing with injuries. I need him. He's my number one running back. Need him to come back. In the comments down below, let me know. What is your record? That's going to be comment question of the day. Good catch, Michael Thomas. What is your fantasy football record if you're in a fantasy football league? If you're not in a fantasy football league, would you want to join a fantasy football league? Let me know in the comments down below. But I need him. Come on, MT. I need DeAndre Hopkins to come back. My team, I have the second most points scored in my fantasy football league. But somehow I'm one and three. The Colts don't make much sense to me. They're the only team right now that's one, two, and one. So here we go with them. Here comes Jonathan Taylor. And he's going to take this one all the way to the house. 
But the Colts are weird because they can beat a team like the Chiefs, who I would say are a top three team in the entire league right now. But then they can't beat other teams. They can't beat the Jaguars. They can't beat the Texans. They can't beat the Titans. So they lost all their division matchups and tied. But they can beat the Chiefs. How does that make sense? The New York Jets are not as bad as people thought they would be. And I, for one, said before the season, I like the Jets to upset a few teams to maybe win seven games or so. But I said that had to be with Zach Wilson at quarterback. And last week, we see Zach Wilson come back. Now, they didn't play amazing, but they definitely played better offensively. With Zach Wilson, we have some good trick plays. Zach Wilson catching a touchdown in the end zone. You've got Wilson getting involved. Elijah Moore, Brees Hall, the rookie. This offense has some talent and their defense plays really solid and I like Nick Sala as the coach so I think the Jets can still win seven games they're two and two right now winning five more games this year I definitely think is possible we got Garrett Wilson, a rookie. Brees Hall, a rookie. Zach Wilson, his second year. Don't sleep on the Jets. For the Broncos, their offense has been atrocious so far this year with Russell Wilson. I definitely expect them to be way better offensively than they actually are. Losing to Seattle in week one. They have some of the worst points scored. They have the worst points scored in the entire league. I'm not exactly sure. The coach doesn't look amazing. Nathaniel Hackett doesn't look like a very great coach for this team. We'll see what happens in the future. It's the beginning of the season. You know, you have a new system. For Russell Wilson, brand new head coach. We'll see what happens in the future, but for right now, it does not look very good for the Broncos offensively in a very tough division with the Chargers, who we know can play offense, with the Chiefs, who we definitely know can play offense, and the Raiders beat them last week. So we know all three of these AFC West teams have very good offenses. So Russell Wilson and the Broncos are going to have to figure it out if they want a chance to win this division. Cortland Sutton dropped it. And it doesn't really make sense to me why they struggle so much. You have two really solid receivers in Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. You have KJ Hamler we're trying to go to right now. I can't catch it. I mean, you lost Javante Williams, so that definitely stinks. That's a big loss for this team. Javante Williams is a very good running back. But you still have Melvin Gordon, who's a suitable running back. He has a lot of experience in this league. They should be way better than they actually are. You have to let Russ cook, though, I think, a little bit more if you're the Denver Broncos right now. Speaking of the Chargers, here they are. Way better than the Broncos. Defensively, offensively. Definitely see the AFC West coming down to two teams, and that is the Chargers and the Chiefs. The Chargers could be 3-1 and one if they were able to beat the Chiefs in the Thursday night game. Justin Herbert didn't get injured, but they looked amazing last Sunday against Houston. Real quick, everyone, before we get back into the video, if you're enjoying the content you are seeing, make sure to subscribe. Only 6% of the people watching this video right now are actually subscribed to the channel, but let's get back into the video. The Ravens look good, but they just can't finish games. They could be 4-0 and if they finish that game against the Bills, and they finish that game against the Dolphins. Lamar Jackson, though. What a juke by Lamar. We're going to see you later. Thank you, Arcade Mode. What a run right there by Lamar. Good jukes. And he finds his way into the end zone. But they could be 4-0 right now if they didn't choke against the Bills and Dolphins in the fourth quarter. They just got to close games. Lamar is playing at an MVP level right now, but they find themselves at 2-2. Two two. There are three 2-2 two two teams, though, in the North. For the Browns here, we have Nick Chubb. And the Browns that are 2-2. Two and two, And Nick Chubb's playing like an absolute beast right now. Best running back in fantasy. Best running back in football. The man is just a walking 100 yards rushing every single game. They're looking to get Miles Garrett back. I'm not sure when he's coming back after that car accident that he got into, sadly. But Nick Chubb, man. This guy is so good. Putting the team on his back. They probably should have beat the Falcons, too. But I think they're just having a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover. They didn't win, but they were in the Super Bowl. They look solid, though. Their offense is starting to pick it up. They got to get Jamar Chase a little bit more involved. But they beat an undefeated Dolphins team on Thursday Night Football last week. So they're definitely going to be improving. Can we run this in with Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow in the snow. Dive for it. At the one. Wow, what an effort right there by Joe Burrow. I thought I just got in. I thought I crossed the goal line. But this time, Mixon will get it done. I told you also, like the Jets, don't sleep on the Jaguars right now. They are looking very, very good. Their offense is looking amazing. Trevor Lawrence having a great second season. Additions of Christian Kirk is looking good. James Robinson somehow coming off a tour to Achilles is looking very good as well. They have him in fantasy. He's been a great option. Picked him up in like the 12th round. So James Robinson, ETN as well in the backfield. A really good one-two combo. Kirk's been playing amazing, like I said. 
But Trevor Lawrence, man, and Doug Peterson as the coach right now is coaching this team up very, very well as I throw that one to Kirk. And it's not going to be completed. Let's throw... I don't even know. I'm just going off coach suggestions for this video. Normally when I play, if I play online, I'm not using coach suggestions. But for these videos, when we're just talking, hanging out, and having some fun, it doesn't matter too much. Look at Christian Kirk. That's my guy, Christian Kirk, right now. What a stud. Okay, it is Tennessee Titans time. And you know what that means? It's Derrick Henry time. And Derrick Henry, the last two weeks, is starting to play like Derrick Henry's having two really good back-to-back -back games in week three and four. So we'll see what the future holds for Derrick Henry and the Titans. But if they want to win this division, they pick up a win against the Colts. They're going to need Derrick Henry to be Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's actually catching passes this year, too, which I find extremely awesome. Pass catcher Derrick Henry. Truck someone. Go into the end zone. Derrick Henry, I still want the Colts to win the division because I picked them to win the division, but it looks like the Titans are the better team right now. The whole NFC West is 2-2 two and two right now. We'll start it off with, I think, is the worst team in the West, and that's the Seattle Seahawks, but they are playing way better than I thought. I got to give it to the Seahawks 100%. I thought the Seahawks would probably be the worst team in the entire league, but Geno Smith actually looks pretty decent. DK Metcalf still looks really good without having Russell Wilson, as we're going to have him go deep right here and go into the end zone, possibly. DK Metcalf, they lost Jamal Adams for the year so that definitely stinks for their defensive side of the ball but Penny Metcalf Lockett they're playing solid enough I can see the Seahawks still finishing in last place probably with like five or six wins the Cardinals I don't know what to think of them still they don't have Hopkins back though so they're not their max potential when they get DeAndre Hopkins back this offense plays way better I don't know why to start in the third and whatever now I'm fourth and 14 I simulated and I guess I joined this drive late so I have to pick up a first down right here but once they get Hopkins back man Hopkins is going to help this offense be way better. When Murray plays with Hopkins, he is way better statistically. You can look it up. He is way better with DeAndre Hopkins. It makes sense. He's the number one receiver. They need DeAndre Hopkins back. But Kyler Murray, if he's going to run the ball towards the red zone, he's incredibly difficult to stop like we saw in that Raiders game when they came back. I think it was like 20 nothing in week number three. If he's going to play like that, or week number four. Was it week four? It might have been week four. But when he plays like that, the Cardinals are extremely difficult to beat. We have the Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams up next, and I did not expect to put them this low on this video. When I thought I was going to make this video a few weeks ago, I did not expect the Rams to be as bad as they are right now. I did not see them going two and two. I thought they would be the number one team in the NFC. I knew the Buccaneers would give them some trouble. The Packers, maybe the Eagles as well. But I didn't expect them to be two and two. They only have one good offensive weapon. And there he is right there, Cooper Cup. They are missing OBJ right now. When he comes back, they definitely have to sign Odell Beckham Jr. They need a number two wide receiver option behind Cooper Cup because right now they don't have one and their defense isn't playing as great as it did in years past. Pretty funny that we have all four of the NFC West teams in a row. But right now, they're all 2-2, two and two, and they're all about playing pretty solid. None of them are playing horrible. None of them are playing amazing. I would say the 49ers are the best, though. That's why I saved them for the end here. They have the best defense. That's for sure. Nick Boza's going crazy. Fred Warner's doing really good. But Jimmy G, he is playing good for this 49ers team so far. They are doing what they need to do, and that's give Debo Samuel the ball right off the line of scrimmage and just let him run with it. You saw that 57-yard touchdown against the Rams. That's what they need to do. They need to run the ball a lot and then work out out of the play action that is textbook 49ers football and they don't even have Trent Williams right now I'm not sure exactly when he's gonna come back I thought he was taken off the roster from Madden 23 but it looks like he's still here right now get the ball to Debo get the ball to Debo and that's what the 49ers need to do that's what they're doing they're two and two but I can see them being way better by the end of the season the Falcons remind me a little bit of the Lions they have a little bit of a better record they're two and two but the Lions and the Falcons they're always in every single game it always comes down to the wire I don't want to score just yet. I want to get this ball to Kyle Pitts or Drake London, but they always come down to the wire. All their games are close right now. They're playing with a lot of heart. They're playing really, really solid offensively. They just can't finish games. The Falcons could beat 3-1 and one if they beat the Saints in week one. They didn't choke that game. They could have possibly came back against the Rams because the Rams aren't looking great this year, which we just talked about. The Falcons honestly could be 4-0. They beat a good Browns team. They don't have to show Watson, but the Falcons are underrated in my opinion. But the weapons for Tampa Bay are finally starting to come back. Chris Godwin's back finally. Hopefully he stays healthy. Julio Jones has been banged up a lot. Hopefully he gets back on the field. You have Fournette who hasn't been great yet this season. Tom Brady hasn't been his best son, but I definitely think better weeks are coming for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We now find ourselves in the snow at Soldier your field and if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that the Bears were somehow two and two I wouldn't have believed you because I thought by far they'd be the worst team in the league I thought they'd easily be the worst team in the NFL for the 2022 season 
they cannot pass the ball well at all. They have to get better weapons for Justin Fields, a little bit more protection as well. But shout out to the defense of the Bears for keeping them in all these games and allowing them to somehow win two games because I never would have thought in the first four games of the season you would see the Bears at 2-2. Two and two. But here they are, and that's all that matters. All that matters, it doesn't matter how you win, you just got to win the game. I would like to see them get Darnell Mooney a little more involved, though. Definitely will say that. Darnell Mooney, I really like him. We're going to get Cole Komet, too. They should get more involved, too, the tight end. They have some weapons on offense like Montgomery. He's a little banged up right now. But Mooney and Komet, that can actually catch the ball. I like those guys. For the Dolphins, they are 3-1 and one right now. They could possibly be 4-0 if they were able to keep Tua on the field. But sadly, he has a lot of injuries going on. He definitely has a concussion right now. We don't know when Tua Tagovailoa is actually going to be back for the Dolphins. So they might lose a few games here. They're going to have Teddy Bridgewater, though, who's not a bad quarterback by any means. They can still win games with Teddy Bridgewater, but they definitely want to see Tua back on the field. But his health definitely comes first. The team has to think about that, so we'll see when Tua comes back. The Bills are easily one of the best teams in the league. They're still my pick to go to the Super Bowl in the AFC, I'm thinking. They still have the offensive pieces, Diggs, Josh Allen. They probably have the best quarterback in the conference in Josh Allen. Mahomes right behind him, though, but it is very close. I like Josh Allen, Diggs, Gabriel Davis. They can use a better run game, though. They always could use a better run game, but the Chiefs don't run the ball very good either, so it really is passing attack versus passing attack when it comes to the Buffalo Bills. What I will say about the Bills, though, is that they don't have Micah Hyde for the entire season, and that definitely is going to hurt this team a lot down the stretch, especially when you get into the playoffs. But it's still early on in the season. We'll see what happens, but not having Micah Hyde really going to hurt. At least they have Von Miller this year. They did still make additions to this defense where they still can play good. As long as their defensive line can get to the quarterback, doesn't matter who they have in the secondary, that can make some plays. As we get into the Chiefs right here, we'll talk about them in just a second. I just want to say once again, all these teams that we're doing, when they have the same record, we're going to be doing all of them. Doesn't really matter the order we do them. So we have all these three and one teams just because I have the Chiefs here. Doesn't mean I think they're better necessarily than the Bills or the Dolphins. Same for the two and two, the one and three teams, the 0 and four teams, whatever there are in the league. And we're also recording this before Thursday night of week five. So we have Broncos and Colts week five. I don't know the records right now. I don't know who's going to win those games. So we're just doing this through four weeks of the season. But we have more Kev Valdez Scantling getting open right there on that streak route. And Patrick Mahomes delivers a perfect ball right there for the 3-1 and one Kansas City Chiefs, who are definitely a powerhouse in the AFC. But the real reason why we're winning games is because of one guy on offense, and that's Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is playing like prime rookie year, sophomore year Saquon Barkley right now. He is a stud on offense. And nobody's stopping him right now. Absolutely nobody is stopping Saquon Barkley. Oh, get off me to the end zone. And the defense is also playing really good for us right now, too. If the defense keeps playing well and Barkley keeps playing well, we can win some games. Maybe make the playoffs somehow. The Cowboys, kind of like the Giants. I mean, I expected the Cowboys to be good at the beginning of the season. But then there was Dak Prescott. So I was like, there's no way they're going to be a solid team. But somehow they're 3-1. and one. Cooper Rush, 4-0 as a starter. For the Dallas Cowboys, I find that crazy, but he's playing well. He's doing what he needs to do. He's letting the defense play, and then he's making the plays that he needs to. There's CeeDee Lamb right there, but I can't believe the Cowboys are 3-1. and one. It's possible they can win all four games without Dak Prescott because he's not going to be back for week five, but he'll be back after that. That would be insane. And wow, I thought CeeDee was going to catch that. Can I run this for Cooper Rush? Run this for Cooper Rush for the end zone. The Packers, in my opinion, are a very fluky 3-1. They beat a very bad Chicago Bears team who are 2-2, two and two, like I said, surprising. I thought they'd be one of the worst teams in the league. Last week, they beat a third-string quarterback, Bailey Zappi. Was that his name? I forgot for the New England Patriots. And barely beat him in overtime, might I add. So that wasn't very good. And then they beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which you would think is a very good win. But they had no Evans. They had no Godwin. They had no Rob Gronkowski, obviously. No Julio Jones. Their best receiver was Russell Gates, who's a solid wide receiver, but he's not Evans, Godwin, Gronk, all those great weapons. Julio Jones, he's not those guys. But now it's time to gritty. We always score with Justin Jefferson, and this is going to be no different. This is going to be no different. Oh, Justin Jefferson goes up for it, but can't quite make the grab. Let's see if we can hit him over the middle, possibly. And they take this in for the touchdown. And I have Jefferson on my fantasy team. So we had a great week four for me. Hopefully that trend continues. I need fantasy points. I need to see gritties from Justin Jefferson. It's super exciting though. When you have a fantasy wide receiver, that's one of the stud wide receivers in the league. Fantasy football is a lot more exciting when you know he can drop 30 points on any given Sunday. 
And there he is right there, Justin Jefferson. Let's see it. You know we have to see a gritty in every single video. There it is right now. Let's finish things off with the Eagles. The Eagles are the only undefeated team left going into week five, and they are the best team in the NFL, in my opinion. Their run game is immaculate. Jalen Hurts involved in that run game makes it even better. The passing game with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith is really, really solid. Their defense is playing amazing, and their offensive line, probably the most underrated thing about this team, just plays so good. You see the two superstar abilities on their line in this game right now, but but that offensive line definitely helps Jalen Hurts deliver better footballs. When you have time in the pocket, Jalen Hurts can deliver balls to A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and the occasional Quez Watkins 75-yard touchdown because Quez Watkins has some insane speed. It's always exciting to see the last undefeated team in the NFL. How far are they going to go before they lose a game? We'll have to see. We'll see when the Eagles finally lose a game, but there's a touchdown for Quez Watkins, the best team in the NFL, the Eagles. That's gonna do it for the video, everyone. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new. In the comments down below, let me know what challenge, what video do you wanna see next. Peace.